What is going on, everyone? My name is Rodney, and if you already knew that, thank you so much for coming back and watching another video. It's been a while since I started a video quite like that, but this feels a little more official for whatever reason, because it's going to be longer, I guess. So I figured I might have a uh, a little intro, a little a little consistency to how I do these videos. I'm going to try something new here. I want you to comment below. Tell me if you like it. I'm going to go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, a little bit longer form. I guess you would consider it a podcast. I know. Crazy to think. Starting a podcast. But a lot of people have commented you know, on videos that I've posted that are 10 minutes long and say, love the podcast, bro. And I've never really considered my channel a podcast channel. Um, but... I would say the Bleach Report live streams that I re-upload to YouTube are teetering on the edge of podcasts, and now this is full-blown, okay? Just because it's visual doesn't mean it's not also in the ear holes. So I'm going to do something a little different. You know, these December Mondays are going to be the Bleach Report live streams, and then Wednesday, Friday are going to be podcasts about Raiders topics. We're going to get into Aiden's performance. We're going to get into, you know, topics like Getsy basically forcing people to start Garden of Minshew. I've got a new segment called On the Train, Off the Train. Pretty self-explanatory title of the channel. Name of the channel. All aboard Raiders. Sort of a train thing. And then we're going to take questions that I've gotten from comments on other videos, comments, community posts, and Discord questions as well. So if you want your question to be potentially answered in the next video, comment on this here video, podcast, whatever you want to call it, and I'll read them, and I'll pick out the ones I want to answer, and they could be anything you want, uh, Raider-specific, not Raider-specific, doesn't matter, but for right now, we're going to do this thing, and we're going to see how it works. It's going to be a test drive here. Uh, you know, uh, look, I like talking to Raiders. I like talking to you guys, so it's not going to be too difficult for me to continue to do this, especially if you do enjoy it, so hit that like button and comment away. And right off the rip, oh, wait, hold on, one more thing. As I take a big old drink of water, there's going to be time codes or chapters at the bottom of this video. So if you want to skip around and see other topics or whatnot, and whatnot, you can do that. Um, but let's talk about, okay. <clears throat> so it has now been, as we played on Friday, it's been a few days since the Aiden O'Connell, the, the shot heard around the world, was the start of the revolution. And I, I've seen a lot of takes, a lot of people saying, let's give him next year. Don't draft Shador Sanders. Or this guy stinks. He was throwing nothing but screen passes. I really did see the nothing but screen passes comment, which is concerning to the people who say that because it makes you think, number one, they, you know, are just trolling, which is annoying. Or number two, they need to be checked into a mental hospital. Either way, or maybe they're blind. Maybe they're literally legally blind, and they can't see, and they just assume that it was us green passes. And if that's the case to the person or people who commented that, I do apologize for the idea that you don't have any eyesight. Here's the thing that I feel like is kind of getting lost in the water with the Aiden O'Connell of it all. There is absolutely room for gray, right? I know we are the silver and black, but right now we're going to be talking gray. What do I mean by that? It doesn't have to be this or that. Just because he had a very good game, I'll call it a great game. The best game of his career so far. You know, the, the hardest game on our schedule, and he balled out. Just because he does that doesn't mean he should get all of next season. It doesn't mean we shouldn't draft a quarterback, but it doesn't also not mean those things. We obviously have you know five more games to figure all this out. But the frustrating thing is, you know, the people that go, it's just one game. It's not, right? Last year, as a rookie fourth rounder, he came in under an interim head coach, interim play caller, and he did some good things. He also did some bad things. You know what you call that? A rookie season. And what you saw this past Friday was definitely a player who got better. Now, is this version of Aiden O'Connell good enough to win a Super Bowl? I struggle to understand why anyone can have any take 
I didn't really give a definitive answer as to this is the guy after the game. Like I was riled up, but it was frustration of the idea that he didn't start the whole season. And we'll get into that in this as well. But I didn't come out and say, and because of this game, this should happen. I don't understand the rush that a lot of people have to have takes on Aiden O'Connell. There's always a take. Everyone's got a take. Hot off the oven. The stove, whatever. Why can't we all just take a collective deep breath and watch these last five games and see what happens? And why can't we also be okay with admitting when we're wrong? Because there were plenty of people. I'm not saying that there aren't people that aren't admitting this, but there were plenty of people that said to me, doesn't matter if Aiden starts or Minshew starts, it's going to be the same looking team. And now those people are saying, well, it's not the same looking team, but it's the same result as if it had anything to do with Aiden O'Connell, why we lost that football game. I said it in my Friday video. You lose games because of Gardner Minshew. You do not lose games because of Aiden O'Connell. And to sit here and say that, oh, it's just going to look the same, it's going to look the same, they both stink. One quarterback, can we agree on this, is clearly and obviously better than the other. And I also think it's pretty clear and obvious that he got significantly better within the pocket in an offseason with a new coordinator that clearly didn't want him to start for whatever reason. This guy's now on his fourth coordinator in about a calendar year. And again, this is why I wanted to see him start from the beginning because we know what Minshew is. Minshew is not going to get any better. There is a chance, and more likely than not, you don't know how much better, but there is a puncher's chance that your rookie quarterback who did some good and some bad is going to improve upon that. Only time will tell with these last five games how much he would have improved. And we'll see how much of it is Scott Turner. And we'll see how much of it is the new run game with Samir, uh, I was going to say Zamir McCormick, Sincere McCormick. Uh, Another thing I want to bring up uh, in terms of Aiden O'Connell is the team clearly loves him. Like that's half the battle with these guys. The team clearly wants to play for him and believes in him. And he clearly is not afraid. Gardner Minshew was scared. He was like a little chihuahua. He was afraid to play football at times. Aiden O'Connell doesn't have that. Nationally televised game in Arrowhead, he didn't give a rip. He was ripping it. That's half the battle with any quarterback in this league. Aiden O'Connell is not going to be afraid to put the ball in harm's way sometimes, and that's okay. He's going to make, he will throw interceptions. And, and this, this is the thing that I think frustrates me a lot. Is like, I, I've seen other Raider YouTubers go, you know, Gardner Minshew had some good plays, and he played great, but he threw a couple balls that could have been intercepted. Yeah, have you ever watched a football game? That's every single quarterback who's ever lived on any given Sunday. Mahomes threw a pickable ball yesterday. He was batted up in the air, and Max Crosby almost caught it off the tip. Every single quarterback, from Peyton Manning to Jeff Driscoll, I don't know why I'm taking shots at Jeff Driscoll, but he's the first random that popped into my head, will throw interceptable passes in games. I don't know why we all of a sudden... Actually, I do know. I think I have figured it out. I don't know why... I have figured it out. I I, I wasn't sure why... We were being so hypercritical of this kid. Let him throw bad passes. Let him throw good ones and just take it in. I know partly it's because, especially with Devontae, and before we got injured, it felt like we were a quarterback away. So it's like, oh, this kid keeps making mistakes. And it's like, yeah, this kid. Not this veteran who just led a team to nine wins keeps making mistakes. That's different. Anytime Gardner Mitchell threw a bad pass, I thought to myself, why isn't Aiden O'Connell in the game? He can do this. He can throw bad passes. He's younger. Let's see what the kid has. But when Aiden O'Connell has a good game, people are so quick to be like, yeah, but he threw a couple bad passes. What? Who is that helping? We all watched the game. Aiden O'Connell doesn't need me to hype him up, and he doesn't need me to tear him down. I'm here to tell you what's going on and how to interpret what you're seeing on the field and ultimately just my opinion on it. 
I don't understand or I didn't understand initially the need to consistently point out, oh, what a shitty pass. Okay. People like Mahomes had multiple touchdowns in this game that he missed. But people don't care. People people don't say that because he's Mahomes. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand the the consistent need to tear people down. Especially when they're so young. That he hasn't even started 17 full games that he hasn't played a season's worth of games. However, I do think a part of us rushing to just completely dismiss him. And again, I'm not. I'll get into what we should do in the draft. I got questions lined up. I think a big part of it is Derek Carritis. We're afraid of slightly above average, and we've seen what slightly above average gets us, which is not much. So we're like, oh, we we need Josh Allen. We need him. We need him. Where's Josh Allen? Where's Mahomes? Where's Lamar? We need the next that. And look, I would love to have that. And if that person's in this draft, Tom, t- and 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 if we are in position to take that person. He will be on the roster. There's no need to panic about Aiden O'Connell starting next year. Whether I wanted to, whether you wanted to, or whether none of us wanted to. It's going to play out the way Tom Telesco and AP, whoever the coach is, is going to want it to play out, and Tom Brady. They know what's best. They're getting paid the big bucks, so you don't have to stress out about it. What I'll say on the pushback to the Derek Carritis stuff, oh, we can't, we can't do another skinny white guy? Or, you know, not skinny white guy, but you know what I mean. We can't do another, oh, shucks, accurate passer who can't move in the pocket. Is because of, you know, we, we saw what happened. But the reason I'm pushing back on it is Derek Card never had even a remotely decent defense in his tenure. And if he did, we would have made the playoffs pretty consistently. If we had any sort of consistency with, the coaching staff and the play calling and the front office mixed with this decent defense. I mean, we're 15th in the league right now in defense with a lot of injuries. And I've, and I've been a big critic of Patrick Graham. But, you know, he's hanging on for dear life with all these injuries. I don't envy the position he's in. If we have a great defense and Aiden O'Connell can do what he did against the Chiefs on any given Sunday, we could easily make the playoffs. The problem is... We kind of wasted the beginning of the season with the Gardner Minshew of it all, and then Aiden got hurt, and the rest is history. We'll see what happens these last five games. My prediction is he's going to have some great games and some not great games, and we're going to go, well, I don't know. Is he good? I don't know. Tom Telesco and the rest of the guys in there are going to have to do what's best for the team. The issue is when you have the next story about Getsy apparently pushing for Gardner Minshew to start and maybe swaying Antonio Pierce, which is kind of annoying that Antonio Pierce would let something like that happen, but I have a lot to say about this situation and Antonio Pierce. Let me just tell you real quick before I get to that story, make sure we're hitting that subscribe button. About 55% of the people that are watching this video are not yet subscribed. We're so close to 11,000. Hit that thing. Make sure you're hitting the button, hitting the bell, so you get all the notifications of when I post videos, because the earlier you watch, the better it is for the algorithm. It's annoying, I know, but it is what it is. That's the life of putting videos on YouTube. Anyway, hit that subscribe button. Hondo Carpenter, ever heard of him? Beat writer, insider. He's sort of giving his opinion, but he's alluding to the idea that he's pretty sure... Luke Getze was favorable to Gardner Minshew in the quarterback battle and was the biggest voice in the locker room to start him, which is hilarious because if you think about it, Devontae might still be on the team if Aiden started because Devontae loves Aiden. Devontae was also the reason Luke Getze was hired, and Luke Getze went Gardner Minshew instead of Aiden O'Connell, interestingly enough. All that to say. Unfortunate that Antonio Pierce was swayed by this really bad offensive coordinator who clearly had no idea what was going on. And what's interesting about Antonio Pierce is there was this stigma that he had, you know, like Compton, like, I'm a Raider, this is my show, blah, blah, blah. I think he really wanted to show people that he was open to collaboration and he didn't want it to be, I'm the CEO. I, I got to earn the Jim Harbaugh status. I can't be Jim Harbaugh right off the rip. So I'm going to listen to Tom Telesco, and I'm going to bring in Tom Coughlin and Marvin Lewis, and I'm going to hear what my offensive coordinator has to say, and I'm going to take 
what I think are the best ideas from these guys that are qualified and kind of Frankenstein this thing together, and it's going to be great. And I do think that if he had his way, Zamir White would have lost that job real fast. I think Aiden O'Connell would have been starting since week one. And I think that we would be running a different offense. But he went through the hiring process, and he wanted to show that he's not this loose cannon. I got the job, and now I'm the, I'm the chef. I'm the head chef, and you're fired. And we're 86ing this, and we're freezing this, and we're putting this on ice. I think he wanted to show that he was collaborative, and that might have been the downfall of this season. Because he gave Gardner Minshew four games, which is what I said would happen. I said they're going to give him four games. If he's two and two or better, he's going to get a fifth. And by some miracle, we beat the Ravens. And by another miracle, we beat the Browns, who looked pretty damn good with a new quarterback. And we were 2-2, two and two, even though Gardner Minshew had next to nothing to do with those two wins. And he had a lot to do with the two losses. So you can't bench Gardner Minshew for going 2-2. Two and two, But then that fifth game, he was just terrible. And AP was like, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going to Aiden. And we would have been two and three with Aiden O'Connell for the rest of the season. And he played in that Steeler game, and I told you guys I didn't expect much in that game. He hasn't had a lot of time to mesh with the ones. We don't have a running game. Luke Getzey still doesn't look great right now, and it's one of the best defenses in the league. We were still in possession to be down one score going into the fourth quarter, and Amir Abdullah fumbles at the one-yard line. Who knows what would have happened if that doesn't happen. But I digress. We fall to two and four. Aiden O'Connell on the second series against the Rams gets hurt. Yada, yada, yada. The rest is history. He doesn't come back until the Chiefs game. I think a lot of us are quick to say, Antonio Pierce is terrible. He did this and he did that. When you look at what he wanted to do, and these are just facts. Again, these are not opinions. This is just what happened. Antonio Pierce wanted to draft Jaden Daniels. And they tried to move heaven and earth from everybody you know, that said in the building, three first-round picks. That didn't happen. He wanted to hire Cliff Kingsbury, who was a very great offensive mind, who was going to get some head coaching looks. Way better than Luke Getze. Probably better than Scott Turner. We'll get to Scott Turner in a second. And he did hire him. But they didn't want to guarantee a third year or second year or whatever, so Cliff was like, peace, I'm out. That's not on Antonio Pierce. That's on the front office. That's on Mark Davis. That's on whoever made that decision. And now, apparently, he wanted to go Aiden O'Connell. And he got talked out of it by Luke Getze. And I think he was like, you know what? I'm going to let this ride with the guys that I hired. I'm going to trust in my staff. And it bit him in the ass. And halfway through the season, he was like, you know what? I'm going to get fired if I don't start showing some real competitiveness here. And he fired Getze. He brought in Scott Turner, to, or he brought in North Turner along with Scott Turner. And ever since then, again, we've had competitive losses against the Browns, Dolphins, sorry, against the Broncos, Dolphins, and Chiefs. Three not easy games where Aiden, Gardner at first, and then Aiden came in and really made this team look a lot better than it was for a lot of the season. And we've dealt with so many injuries that it makes me think whether or not you want it to happen or I want it to happen, and right now I'm leaning toward wanting it to happen, Antonio Pierce is going to get another season. I think internally the locker room still really respects him. I think Mark Davis has promised him at least two seasons because Mark Davis does not want to keep firing and paying people that aren't working for him. We've made a lot more money in Vegas than we ever did in Oakland, but it doesn't matter. Rich people are frugal. That's why they're rich. And at the end of the day, Antonio Pierce has had to deal with a lot of stuff that wasn't under his control, the Devontae Adams of it all, Christian Wilkins and Koontz going down pretty early. Like those are two of your premier defensive guys, and they're just poof gone. Nate Hobbs and Ja'Cory and Bennett haven't played the last three games or something like that. So I think it's only right to see what AP and Telesco do with $100 million in the bank. And a whole lot of draft picks. I think we have 10 picks in total. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. That Jets pick is looking better and better. And Devontae goes, at least with the Jets, we have a chance. You don't, Devontae. Open your eyes. 
What's ironic is if Devontae waited this season out, maybe Aaron Rodgers is on the Raiders next year. But I think I'm okay with that for now. Aaron Rodgers was one at once at one time my favorite player in the league. Josh Allen has now surpassed that, but boy, Aaron Rodgers fell off an absolute cliff. Cliff Kingsbury. So I do think AP's getting another year, and I think he probably deserves it, to be completely honest. But say you, let me know. Before I get into on the train, off the train, and the questions, I got to let you know about the Patreon, patreon.com slash Raiders. It is basically a YouTube membership type thing, but instead of YouTube memberships, instead of YouTube taking 40% of everything that you give me, Patreon only takes a flat fee of 5%. You get exclusive content, your name at the end of the credits, like all these beautiful patrons right here hovering above my right or left shoulder. These people are the best of the best. And they've decided to give me a little bit each month. And for that, they get, like I said, an EP credit, an executive producer credit, exclusive videos, ad-free content, videos like this days in advance. If you're interested in signing up for one of those memberships, we are one member away from 25. Link is in the description below. Or go to patreon.com slash Raiders. Let's get into a new segment. I don't have graphics. I don't have songs. I don't have anything. We're going to call it On the Train, Off the Train. And it's sponsored and brought to you by absolutely nobody. Maybe one day that'll change, but for right now it's brought to you by nothing. Pretty self-explanatory. Who am I on the train for? Who am I off the train for? Let's start with on first. I am on the Turner train. And I'm not talking Timmy. I'm not talking uh, Turner, Turner, Turner. I'm not talking... Will Turner, I'm not talking Chip Skylark, sort of a fairly odd parents reference. Scott and North Turner have made this offense look completely competent, even with Gardner Minshew under center. And here's, I, I hear it already 19 points, 17 points. What, what, that, that is not a competent offense. Guys, look at the people we're running out on there on the field every day. This is not. The greatest show on turf. As much as I appreciate what Aiden O'Connell is doing, I think he could be decent, and up to very good. He's still Aiden O'Connell. He's not Tom Brady. Handing off to Amir Abdullah and Sincere McCormick. People playing positions on the offensive line they've never played before. Rookies. Jacoby Myers, who's never been a number one, and a rookie tight end. Now, the rookie tight end is one of the greatest rookie season tight ends of all time. But still, this isn't the 2015 Denver Broncos. We need to take a step back and go, oh, they're only scoring 19 points. Yeah, this is a middle-of-the-road offense at best with the players that we have right now. An offseason with Aiden under center, or you draft a rookie, and you sign T. Higgins and Najee Harris, and now let's score 25. But it's about using your eyeballs sometimes. What do your eyeballs tell you? The offense looks significantly better. They're finally able to run the football. If they can't run it up the middle, they are throwing swing passes outside the numbers to get these running backs some touches. They've decided finally to go to, to Sincere McCormick. Now, I'm not going to get tricked into saying, don't draft anybody, give him the job, like they gave Zamir White the job out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere, he had a couple good games. However, Sincere McCormick is much more vision-oriented than Zamir White. Zamir White's like Darren McFadden. He's like, see hole, hit hole, poof. And if it's not there, you're done. Sincere McCormick is a little more Le'Veon Bell, a little more balanced, a little more patient, and then hit the hole. I've loved the simplification of the offense. You've seen a little bit more of the power running scheme. You got Michael Mayer back, so we got those two tight ends, and they're not overcomplicating it. They're saying, hey, Aiden, if Trey Tucker's got one-on-one single high safety, go ahead and throw that mother F. If Brock Bowers is on single, you know, he's got like some small linebacker guarding him, Give him the ball. If Jacoby Myers shakes a guy out of his shoes, let's give him a look. It's not that complicated. Luke Getze had Thayer Mumford split out wide and bringing him in like he's Trent Williams. Let's just calm down with, like, the trickeration of it all. I'm on the Scott and North Turner train. There's a question about this coming up toward the end here. And like I said, get your comments below so I can answer these questions. But for right now, I'm on it. I'm completely on it. And this might be part of the reason why I'm off what I'm about to say I'm off the train on, but I'm off the train for right now. These, these could all change. It's fluid, like Stephen A. says. It's fluid. I'm off the train of drafting a quarterback with our first pick 100%. I think I'm about 70% draft a quarterback with the first pick now. I was 100. I'm off that now. I'm completely off that bandwagon. I'm off the train. 
And the reason is, not 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 one game Aiden O'Connell seeing stars in my eyes. I was thinking about Derek Carr in that draft class. That draft class was, if I remember correctly, someone correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that draft class went something like Blake Bortles. Is that Johnny Manziel, Blake Bortles, Teddy Bridgewater draft? I think. Derek Carr, probably the best quarterback to come out in that class. Second round pick. First or second or third pick of the second round. Right? I know you love us. Anyone know that reference? There is a real possibility that we have a top three pick. And one of those picks before us is Cam Ward or Shador, which means we are left with the other guy. If it's not Shador, if it's Cam Ward, I see people going, I don't know, he might not be that good. I don't know. You cannot just take Drew Aller or Jalen Miller with a third pick as much as I might be okay with that option. Okay, interesting. I'll trust you, Telesco. We'll see how the combine goes. We'll see how some of these guys look in the playoffs or the Big Ten Championship. Shout out Penn State, alma mater. If Travis Hunter, which John Gruden is kind of alluded to saying is next Charles Woodson, or Ashton Genty, however you say it, is there, I mean, Abdul Carter, the options are endless. And you saw what happened when people reached for quarterbacks and Brock Bowers fell right into our lap. Is there a chance, is there a world where we go Travis Hunter first round, Jalen Milrow, excuse me, or Drew Aller second round, or maybe trade back up into the first round, which means it's not our first pick technically, technically, but it's still our first round selection after our first first rounder. You give Aiden the year, bridge quarterback, or Aiden's the backup. Sam Darnold, you bring him in for a season. Or you trade for a Stafford. I'm not just throwing stuff out there, seeing what sticks. I am not completely sold on just giving Travis Hunter to the Patriots at pick five because Aiden O'Connell doesn't look like the flashiest quarterback. Or you don't think you could win nine games with Sam Darnold. I don't know. I just think, again, like I said, it's a fluid situation and the options are endless. Endless apps. Applebee's. You feel me? I'm hungry. That's why I'm saying that. Okay, let's get into some questions here. Are we calling this a mailbag? I don't know. I don't know. But I got a couple questions here from the YouTube comments, so comment away. I'm going to be looking at that. And then a couple of questions in the Discord. Um, I'm not going to use the Discord as much as the YouTube comments, so comment away. Um, I just use the Discord in this one because this is my first time doing this. Okay. First question comes from... Too stocked. And he commented, or she, or they, I don't know, whatever you want. Why did AP feel the need to start Samir White based off of his performance from last year but not show the same respect to Aiden O'Connell? Well, I think I touched on that a little bit. I think he wanted to show that he was adaptable, that he was able to listen to people in the room. And if Luke Getzey had a lot of sway on who was the starting quarterback, he might have had a lot of sway on who was the starting running back. And he's been shown to be a pretty bad evaluator of talent and a pretty bad coordinator. So maybe he was like, AP, I think Minshew and Zamir White's the way to go. And AP was like, all right, you're my coordinator. I'm paying you $5 million. Go ahead. We got it. And quickly we were like, no, we're out. Mm -mm. No, thanks. Now, I do think Zamir White, how do I say this? Zamir White showed more positives and less negatives than Aiden O'Connell did last year. So it makes sense for Zamir White to get the benefit of the doubt over Aiden, and the quarterback position is so criticized and and polarized, for lack of a better term, bars, by the way, that it's just easy to be like, all right, Zamir, you can get some touches, but the quarterback, I don't know what to do right now. But yeah, it is a little strange that Aiden didn't get in there faster. Uh, It looked like he won the job, by all means, but I don't know. I don't have a sh- a sure answer, but my opinion is that he probably wanted to start Aiden from the beginning. And, you know, uh, you, you want to call it show some respect, disrespectful. I don't know if I'd go that far, but it probably didn't sit perfectly with Aiden, but he's a pro's freaking pro. And I hope he goes out and balls out against the Bucks. That's going to be awesome. Second question comes from David Larcia. Larissa. Hope I'm saying that even remotely close to right. 
What if we win two more games and draft fourth or fifth and both top QBs are gone? Well, David, you saw what happened last draft. That happened. There was a run on linemen and there was a run on quarterbacks, and we got the best player in the draft 100%. So what happens? We have our pick of the litter. Gen T, Travis Hunter. Get him. That's okay. Take a step back. Th- this, this will become more clear with Aiden O'Connor's performance these last five or so games. However many we have left. If he plays so well that we even think about passing up on one of these guys, then this is kind of a moot point. But if both quarterbacks are gone, Cam Ward and Shador Sanders, I'm assuming you're talking about, I think you stay, you hold the door, you take Hunter or Genty, you either try to trade back into the first to get Aller or Milrow, or you hope that one of them falls to us in the second. We got a high second round draft pick as well. It's going to be the the second. It's going to be the third or fourth pick in the second round with this logic. So I think we'll be okay there. I think we'll be a okay. All right, now we're hopping into the Discord. Zachary, how are you? He says, "Yeah, I have a question, Colin. In your opinion, comma." Do you think Scott Turner has proven himself enough to be the OC with a new QB or Aiden O'Connell going into next season? The short answer, no. I don't think he's done enough yet, but he's absolutely shown to be better than Luke Getze. Now, that's a low bar, and this is coming from someone, I don't know who it was, that really gave Luke Getze the benefit of the doubt and liked what he did early in the season and wanted to blame it all on Gardner Minshew. What it turned out was is that Gardner Minshew stinks and Luke Getze stinks. And Gardner Minshew's not great unless he has everything going his way. And when he has a bad coordinator, it's going to only be amplified to a million. Do I think he has a chance to be retained? Sure, especially if AP's the next head coach. Or the next head coach. The, the, the same head coach. If, if AP retains his job, then I think Scott Turner has a real chance to stay here. I don't think they want to go get another coordinator for Aiden O'Connell. That'd be five different offenses to learn. However... I've, I've said there's other names out there. Wes Welker, Josh McCown are the two guys that I've been thinking about right now. Um, what's the guy's name? Penn State is uh, Kornacki. That's a very good offense that they run there. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of trickery and a lot of fun there in Penn State. They've made Jaraller look like a first-round draft pick. So uh, he hasn't done enough yet. I think you would agree with that statement. But he's well on his way to at least showing – Pretty significant improvements from Getsy to now with his father. I would keep his father, too. Donuts Duncan says, this is a long one, Donuts, but I'm going to let it slide. If the offense continues to look competent and slowly improves in scoring throughout the remainder of games, would you keep the current coaching staff even if we have a legitimate shot at getting Ben Johnson? Also, if Aiden continues to play really good football, do you still draft the QB in the first, even if we end up with the top three pick? Well, I feel like I made myself clear with that. If Tom Telesco thinks this guy could be the next insert great quarterback in that Mad Lib, you got to take him and let him battle it out with Aiden. And this time, I believe the best quarterback will win. You could still draft Shador and stash him for a year and let Aiden do his thing. Aiden either gets hurt or isn't playing well, you throw Shador in there. Aiden O'Connell's a pro. If anything, we got our backup for next season. You still got to sign a veteran who knows what he's doing that isn't Gardner Minshew. The Ben Johnson thing. Ben Johnson and maybe Mike Vrabel. Yeah. Ben Johnson and Mike Vrabel, if you told me right now they could be our next head coach, I would pull the trigger. AP is my third option. I'm going to do a whole list of coaches and quarterbacks that I would give a chance to coach this team, and AP would be on that list. But to spoil it, AP would be three, Vrabel would be two right now, and Ben Johnson would be one. Now, that could change with how much better our team looks down the stretch here. But I don't think you can uh, – it's tough because, like, if you get rid of AP, you almost need to have assurances that you're going to get one of these two guys. Because as much as I do believe in AP and as much as I don't really blame him for a lot of the stuff that's happened this season, you look up at our division and it's Harbaugh with a young, really good quarterback. It's Sean Payton with what seems to be a young, really good quarterback. And it's Andy Reid and Mahomes. So if we can find the next version of that and we don't think it's AP or AP is good, but you can get you can be better, I think mean, you gotta try to be better. Same thing with Aiden. Aiden could be good, but if you think Shador's better, then this this discussion is over. It's Shador, or it's Cam, or it's Drew, or it's it's Jalen. You we we have to not be afraid with with improving the roster, no matter what. And everybody is a part of that, right? 
I would I would get rid of AP for Ben Johnson, even if the offense continues to look competent. Now, if th- there is a world where they play themselves, AP played himself and coached himself into the job. There is a world in which he plays himself above Ben Johnson. It's a, it's a small world after all, but it, there is a world. So only time will tell with that. <sighs> but I think that's it for me today. Yeah, I think think that's that went okay for my first attempt at trying some normal podcast here. We're going to get better. We'll get some graphics and some uh, intro videos and stuff like that. But hit that like button. It does help a lot. And like I said, comment away your thoughts on all the stuff that I said today. And also comment your questions for, this will be Wednesday, the Friday show, which will be filmed on Thursday and will be up on Thursday on Patreon. This will be up on Tuesday. But if you're a patron, you already know that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe. It is free after all the charge to you. I love you guys. And I'll see you next time.